Alright everybody, tuning in, checking it out. What's going to go on paint with Josh this morning? Who knows? Who knows? We're already late and early at the same time. And if you're asking how is that possible, being late and early at the same time, well, I had scheduled the event for 9 a.m. on TikTok and then 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube because I don't know what the heck I'm doing anymore. So we have our 16 by 20 inch white canvas and I just finished priming it with Bob Ross liquid white, right? So you have all that gorgeous white all over the canvas. It's nice and wet. Now we're going to go through all the colors that we have on the palette. We're probably only going to use these four, but let's go through all of them just in case. So we have our Indian yellow, cadmium yellow, bright red, yellow ochre, uh, dark sienna, van dyke brown, sap green, thalo green, prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, all on our palette. Again, nice wet canvas. You guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich on Saturday sessions? Welcome to Saturday sessions, every Saturday sessions, everybody. <laughs> A little bit of Saturday sessions, and we're already stuttering and slurring our words, and late and early this morning. So, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? We're going to come in here with a little bit of our phthalo blue and just make a gorgeous little blue sky. Just all fantastic. We're going to leave a nice big white area in the middle for some clouds. Now, you can see it instantly how it goes from dark and it starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter, right? And that's from that liquid white on the canvas. So, if you don't have the liquid white, it's going to be more difficult. You're going to have to do more mixing on your palette before putting it on the canvas if you don't have the liquid white, right? The liquid white is like magic. It, it literally, look at this. It just literally blends it down so lightly that we don't even have to do any work. You literally don't even have to do any work. Just awesome. Just like that, right? Now, the less pressure that we put on the canvas, the less paint it's going to drop down, making it lighter and lighter and lighter as it mixes in with that white. Now, we're going to come back in here. Grabbing up the same blue, starting from the bottom and pulling inward, right? That way you dump all your, your dark color at the bottom and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it comes. So we have the same effect on both sides. All right, a little bit more paint over here. Come in from the side. Don't let the bits touch though. Have a little bit of white in between. And then as we swipe over the canvas back and forth, as we're painting it, we're gonna end up covering that bit of white and maybe only saving a little bit down here, right? All depends on what you want yours to look like. Doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be the same. You know, it's all, all depends. And we're gonna go over it so many times that it really doesn't even matter what it looks like. So that was a big old brush right uh, brush hair right there. Okay, let's finish the sides of our canvas because it only takes a second. And that way the buyer can take it out and hang it right up. Oh, by the way, this one's for sale. And oh, by the way, this one's upgraded. So it's gonna be $251, but you get the gorgeous, most fantastic frame you've ever seen that's gonna just really make this painting pop. Just so, look at this, let me show you. So if you go over to Etsy.com, uh, so, sorry, paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you'll be able to see a photo of the frame, but this one's gonna go around this little gold frame with all these different textures. You got your marble, kind of crackle look, this fantastic bit, all this felt on the inside with a bit of gold. Oh, guys, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So, if you go by this canvas, number 801, this is number 801. If you missed number 800 last night, boy, it was a doozy. It was a doozy. And uh, what I'm going to have to do is probably release that painting for free on YouTube uh, so everybody can go watch it. I'm going to do that later on today, right after this show, in fact, because that number 800, man, that was so cool um, on how we finished it, how the wave looked. And if you want to see what I'm talking about, go over to my Facebook page and check it out. We posted it over there. Now, let's get a little bit more darkness on our brush, right? Because I like it to be darker in the corners than it is in the center. And it'll kind of guide your eye right into the middle. So what we're going to do is grab a little bit of black right here. A little bit of black on the brush. Not a whole lot, right? Pulling it down. Didn't even cover the whole end. Look at that. Didn't cover the whole end of anything. Just, you can still see all the blue in there. Just a little bit of black, right? Little pressure, little pressure. A little pressure, a little pressure, right? And that way it'll blend in. It's not going to be too crazy. The bottom doesn't really matter. Remember, we're going to go over that tons. And then it all depends how far we pull in with our brush. What's our little sky going to look like? And as we blend it down and crisscross strokes back and forth, all it's doing is mixing it. Just mixing it, softening it, right? Now, you guys, we had a lot of fun on TikTok last night. I was, you guys were kind of telling me how to paint, right? I was asking you, what comes next? What do we do here? 
what comes after that, right? Maybe that'll help you guys get a little bit better. Just from watching without, maybe, maybe you haven't even ordered your paint set yet, right? And you wanna just, you're watching, you're like, ah, oh, it looks easy, but we'll see. Now we're gonna really teach you, because you guys are gonna tell me what we're gonna do. All right, so let's wash this brush out. If you've never seen how we clean the brushes, it, firstly, my cup is, is very low. It's about half full, right? Now, that way, it looks like maybe I'm dunking the whole brush in, but I'm only getting the tip, and look at how much comes out. Just from the few little bristles, maybe a quarter inch in there, you get all that to come out. It's just foul, right? So, when your cup is half empty, right, you have all this empty space where you can shake your bristles back and forth and spin them around. What it does is sprays the uh, edge of the cup, and all the stuff falls back down inside, right? keeping your house nice and clean. Now the brush is sort of dry, it's not leaking anymore, right? But if we went up and touched our canvas with it, boy, that would be bad. That would be a bad idea, it would really ruin it. So what we need to do is shake it into a can, and get off whatever residual was there, right? But it's still very wet, now we gotta go into our bucket. And if you've never seen the old beater bucket, it's a five gallon bucket with a golf ball basket inside the bucket, just like that, right? Down around the bottom, and that way, you have this area where you can beat the devil out of it, uh, beat the devil out of it, and keep all the spray contained. All right, that's the goal, not to ruin the house. How mad is your wife or your husband gonna be if you go and just spray paint thinner all over the house, right? That's not gonna be good. Now, we've come in and we've left this nice white area in our sky, right? We didn't even blend it. Let's go back and blend it a little bit. And then the white is gonna disappear and it's gonna go very, very, very light blue, right? But it's gonna remain looking white. But don't worry, it's not gonna be 100% perfectly white. You need it to be a little bit brighter than the, than the exterior of the sky, that's all, right? And so as we pull in our bit of brightness and our darkness kind of covers over it, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, but that way there's some sort of paint over there. It's not just pure white. There's some sort of something there, right? <clears throat> now what we're gonna do the heck? I wonder why there's paint on this brush. Have we used this brush yet today? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, let's grab a big old fan brush. Doesn't have to be a massive one. Doesn't have to be the most biggest one that you've ever seen, but just a fan brush. And what we're gonna do is accentuate all of that brightness with a little bit more brightness, right? Be very cool. So we'll come in here like this. And all we're gonna do, let's save a bit of that original bright and maybe come in here, just start writing in cursive, right? Just a mess, just a just a squiggle, whatever you want to call it. Just a nasty bit like that. All right now, we're gonna come in. Let's find that brush that I just said had paint on it already. I think it was this one. And that way we'll actually get some paint on it and then we'll be able to clean it, right? So this is a one inch Bob Ross brush, right? You don't have to use the Bob Ross products. Don't have to. Kevin Hill makes a good brush set. Uh, I think Wilson Brickford makes a brush set. Somebody on YouTube, Painting with Magic, if you Google Painting with Magic, he's on YouTube. And I think he's got a brush set, right? I'm waiting for my brush set. Uh, if somebody that, you know, works for a brush making company, if we, you know, if you guys want to make some money, I've got the biggest following out here and I'm waiting for somebody to come to me with a brush deal. Be like, hey, let's get some brushes going. We've almost got a million followers across all of my platforms. That's a lot of customers out there that might buy some brushes. So, come on guys, somebody hit me up with a brush company and let's get some paint with Josh brushes, right? Who would buy paint with Josh brushes? Would you? Would you buy paint with Josh brushes if I had a set? If I had a set that was tried and tested and proven as a good set of brushes? Man, that's the goal right there, right? Let's get a little of our black, a little of our crimson, a little bit, right? A little more crimson than black, actually. That way we have this purpley color versus a dark blackish color. And like I said, even though it looks dark on the brush, it's not gonna be so terribly bad, right? Now, what if we came in, let's see, oh, you know what, guys, what if we do this other thing? We'll come up in here, right, just with a bit of that dark, just smushing over it, go over your bit of your cloud back there, right? Pushes that bit of white cloud back a little bit further. Now, I'm gonna use the big old two inch brush, but I'm just using the corner of the brush to blend it down from very dark, and then it starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, right? And as it does that, it's gonna soften the layer of paint so we can come across it with our next bit of color or whatever, right? Just like that, a little bit of stormy cloud off in the distance, a little bit of white cloud, and even further off in the distance back there, maybe some soft bit of white clouds, right? Just like that, you guys, right? And again, right here, 
wherever you want the base of your cloud to be, you can literally mix it with the rest of the sky and change your, your entire sky color just to be wherever you want. Maybe we want to pull it out a little sideways right there, right? Whatever, it doesn't matter. We're gonna throw a whole big mountain in front of this guy anyway. So, just like that. Now, we can come in, add a lot more white to our brush. This is the same brush, I haven't washed it, right, that we did our white section with, and I changed to a red handle brush to do our dark colors. Then we're going back to the white handle brush to do the white paint, right? Just like that. Now, let's come in. We got all this dark color right there, and if you pop in just a bit of white, right in front, not trying to cover it all, and going above and below it, right? You're gonna be able to push that bit of cloud back, which guess what? Pushes every other bit of cloud back behind it, and the sky gets even further away, right? Just by mixing it down, a couple little counterclockwise circles, very cool. And then you get to decide what it looks like. You want to add a little bit more brightness? You can do that. You want to add a bit of cloud up into here. Maybe this bit connects. Just don't cover all that dark. We put it up there so it can provide shadowing underneath and split up our bit of white. It's a very big dark separator, right? If you've ever seen us do a seascape, I talk about the dark separator all the time where you need a bit of darkness in between your two bits of white. If it was just these two bits of white together, you wouldn't be able to see anything. There wouldn't be any detail, there wouldn't be any depth. There'd be nothing going on in your, in your scene, just like that. Perfect, guys. <clears throat> All right, now remember, if you want to buy this painting, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy this painting before we even get done with it, before I have a chance to post it to my 321,000 Facebook followers, my 268 or 69,000 uh, Instagram followers, Somebody over there might want this painting, especially with that frame. Guys, if you want to see the frame up close and zoom in and see all the details, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Once you're over there, type in the number 801, or if you just type in the word TikTok, then uh, it'll pull up this painting, right? There's no picture of this painting. It's just a picture of my ugly mug, my face. And uh, that's because we haven't finished the painting yet, right? There we go. So I couldn't take a finished, pin it, uh, finished image of it. Soft little chemtrail out there. Love it. Ah, perfect. Just perfect. So if you head over there and you search for number 801 in this search bar or type in the word TikTok and you pick the one painting that doesn't have a finished image and it's just a picture of me, then uh, you'll be able to scroll through those photos and see the frame up close. Now, we need to make up a bit of our darkness. So a bit of purple creation, right? Look, purple creation right here. Which is what three colors, guys? You know which three colors we use? I'll give you a hint. You know which three colors we use to make our mountain? Kind of just very subtle little hint right here. Can anyone type them in the comments? I know this looks very dark, but it is blue, right? You can see underneath it's been pulled out. So we have blue, give you that hint, blank, and blank to make our very dark colors. Anybody know? I'll give you a second, all right? Because the more that you guys answer, right? I always learn by doing. So the more I make you guys do and tell me, then the more you're gonna learn, right? Because that's how I always learned. So let's see, guys, anybody watching? Everybody watching over here on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. More thumbs ups we have, the more... That's it, Destiny Renee, crimson, black, and blue, she saw it. Remember, the more thumbs up that we have on YouTube, the more it's gonna push the video out to more people. It's gonna help us reach more people. More people are gonna see the video. And the more thumbs up, equate to more views. It always works out like that. Now we're going to grab up a bit of our chunky purple, real dark nastiness, right? Just like this, all nasty onto the brush. And we're going to come up here and just start popping them up into the cloud. Holy moly, it's growing like crazy, right? What do you want yours to look like? You want it to be very spiky? You want it to be a bunch of ridges? Do you want to have a whole bunch of little spikes and tops and bits and stuff? What's going on over here? Oh, somebody's favoriting the shop over there. An old customer that's back, Richard. I love Richard. Richard used to buy a lot of paintings and then uh, I think his walls got all filled up. Must have been. <laughs> or maybe I just stopped painting what he liked to, to buy. So, he seems like he's back, Richard, over back there in the Etsy store. So, taking a little bit of our darkness, right? Just putting it in random places. Yeah, we leave light areas, dark areas. It all depends on when we pull our mountain out what it's going to look like. We're never going to leave it looking just like this, right? That's, yeah, that's not the best. You wouldn't want to leave it like that. It's too much texture, too dark, yeah, a little crazy, right? So, and even we can even take a little bit more, so you want to come up a little higher. 
change the shape of your mountain, extend it up a bit, right? All by mushing on a new little bit of paint, you can change it. You can build a mountain. You are Mother Nature. You can shape these mountains. You can make them small. You can make them big. You can cover them in snow. You can cover them in rocks. Totally up to you, whatever you want to do. Pull the paint off, though, right? And we, can, we can literally watch. We can literally make another little section of mountain with the paint that we're removing from this mountain, right? And then we can make it and do all sorts of stuff. Don't have to go all the way to the edge, though. And I never like it to be just a perfect thing. So have it be weird. <laughs> a little weird. Weird little mountain, right? Now we're going to take a nice clean brush. So we don't contaminate this dark with any light paint. Remember, all this liquid white on the canvas is still there. All that paint underneath is wet. And so what it's gonna do is blend with whatever colors that we get in there, right? Let's see, oh, Stephanie's over here in the shop favoriting some stuff. Now, based off of our pressure, right, you can build this mountain, you can have it slide all the way off the canvas or keep it nice and tight right in there, right? All depends on our pressure. You trying to turn a piece of coal into a diamond right here? Or are you just trying to barely just graze a little baby's face just so softly, right? While he's asleep. You know, sleep in baby's face, right? Or are we like, oh, we're really pushing with a lot of pressure. All depends on what you want your mountain to look like. Not up to me, not up to my mountain. This is my 801st painting, right? 801 paintings, which is just insane to me that we've done that many paintings in four years, we've done 800 paintings. That's crazy. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. Slide it out to the side. See those different ridges? How we pulled this way, and then how we pulled this way, and how it's made a little ridge right there, right where our little brush strokes met up? That's exactly what you want. Now you have to follow that little ridge, right? That's our little guide. It's our paint by numbers. And now we're going to go back and follow it. So maybe this guy has a little ridge in there. And see, just from the difference in the poles, you get to decide what it looks like. Maybe we'll have this little valley back in here look really cool. And then, who knows, this guy maybe came down there, we pull it off to the side. Literally going to have all this floating mist at the base of this mountain anyway, so don't really worry about it. Here's the fun part, though. We're going to come in, we're going to mix up all of our colors for our shadowy bits. All right, so let's get a fair amount of blue. That's a good amount of blue in there, right? Really a good amount. And we're going to get a good amount of white, because the blue is very powerful. It's going to keep the white trying to be dark, right? And we don't need it to be so super dark. But we don't want it to be as bright as our white snow either, right? So the best thing to do is mix it until it's like a sky blue color. You get this gorgeous sky blue color, right? And then take a little bit of that darkness that we made our mountain out of, mix that sucker in there. Bang, not too much. So you still have that bit, but now it's like a, gr a grayish bluish color. Very gorgeous little snowy color. And you wanna mix it, but not over mix it. So you have all these different swipes and different colors in there, right? Now, we're gonna go make up our highlight. Very simply, by taking a lot more white than we did initially, right? And taking a little bit of that blue that we just made up. Like, the little teeniest little bit. You can see on the edge right there. Smallest little bit of blue, right? Now, let's find a new place. Maybe we'll come down here. Now, this is gonna have a blue tint to it, but it's gonna be so super bright compared to its darker shadowy cousin over here that it's gonna look bright white, right? But we know it's not bright white because our bright white is up here. A lot of the times the bright white's so bright that the camera can't even focus on the pile of paint because it's so bright. So you wanna have it sort of off and that way, it's hard to explain paint with Josh's style, right? So out here in the distance, we want light colored shadows and dark colored highlights, right? And then as we get closer to us, we need darker shadows and brighter highlights. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but we'll show you as we go, right? Come back in, there we go, get that rid of that bit. Now, we have our three different colors we can use. We have our original color from our mountain, we've got our blue shadow color, and we've got our, our whitish blue highlight color, right? Now, what I like to do is do our shadows first, and that way you can go back in and cover over any bit of our shadows that you don't like with your highlights, versus how Bob did it, he would put his bright section in his whites, and then he would come back and try to sneak in little bits of shadow, right? Which is kind of more difficult for the beginner, I feel. So, what I like to do is grab up our little bit of shadows, stay on the back half of the peak, and we'll come back this way, just very lightly. I just hit my, just hit my palette and almost freaking, there we go, almost dropped the knife. 
very lightly, not even trying to touch the canvas, right? Just trying to let the roll of paint touch. Once your knife starts scraping the canvas, you know you're out of paint. Go back and get some more. Very light and very flat to the canvas, right? Not like this. I'm not trying to scrape at it. I'm not putting a lot of pressure trying to scrape at it. That's not it, right? We're almost hitting the handle on the canvas every time we come down. I get, to, look, there's literally paint on the tip of my fingers right here. Because that's how close we're holding it, almost grazing it with our fingertips every time that we move the knife, right? Just like that. The angle of your knife is so important when you're doing little shadowy bits. Anything to do with a palette knife, your angle is so, so, so important, okay? You have to be sort of straight up in there. I'm gonna get a little bit this way. A little ridge, a little, oh, look at those little bits, right? Even that little darkness in there looks like little humps. All depends on how you pull your knife and what you're doing, right? So off the back half of this guy, we came down there, slid them down, and then maybe it just filled in a little bit more paint on our brush, right? A little bit more pressure, you can slide it, but you're gonna have less breaking, right? That very light pressure and the angle is how you get that breakage of paint versus smooshing it, too much pressure, right? It'll get you those little breaks and it'll be very, especially on a black canvas, you don't need a whole lot of paint to do. But just like that, we have our negative space mountain that's gonna go popping white as soon as we hit it, right? So we're gonna come into our quote unquote white snow, which we know we mixed our white and our blue together in order to make this white snow. So it's really not white, like I was saying earlier, but it's gonna look exactly bright white compared to this other blue. Now, you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich as we come in and just make the most almighty mountain you've ever seen? Scrape up a chunk of white like that. And you come up in here, again, very light pressure. Not trying to cover all the blue that we just put down, right? Leaving some areas in there. Very light, very light little bits. Come up underneath. As we're touching, look, just, and not trying to touch the knife, all the paint falls off of it, right? It's grabbing at different places everywhere. You get all these little bits. So wipe that off. Now you got a clean, fresh knife again. Come in, scrape up some of this. You can try to go slow. The slower you go, the, kind of, the more difficult it is, really, because then you're really, you're worried about your pressure. You're tipping the knife each way. You're going too slow so it doesn't break as much, right? If you go quickly and have that perfect little pressure, you get those little breaks just like that. Oh, it's fantastic. Remember, don't go all the way. We need to have a little bit of brightness on these guys because they're in the shadows. You can turn your knife, flip it around the other way, just like that. But look at how this light color plays against this little lighter bluish color as a bit of light and snow. Just like that, guys. So fantastic on Saturday sessions. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. I'm sorry I was late this morning. It's been crazy. I woke up and I'm like, ugh. I had like 40 minutes because I overslept. I was up way too late last night painting number 800. So we stayed up way too late. And then uh, I'm sitting there going, oh my God, okay. I looked at my phone very first thing when I woke up and the, the Facebook event said 10 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, cool. I don't have to rush right don't have to rush and then i go look at the TikTok event and it says nine and i was like oh shoot okay i'm gonna run now so now i go rushing around try to freaking remember everything i gotta do in the morning it's trash day to get the trash cans out and all sorts of stuff i had going on and then run up here get the canvas ready i still wasn't ready on time so i'm sorry guys but you guys know paint with josh hardly ever on time right look at how we can change the angle just by turning the knife right not, we're not just a robot up here like this. You have to have that little rotation, right? And that's why I like using the fingers, because you can, even if you have wrist problems, right? You can't rotate your wrist, you can still rotate your fingers enough, right? Look at, you can get the same bit of rotation just by using your finger. That's why I'm using just almost half the time, just two fingers like that, right? So, come over here and get a little bit more of our blue, come underneath, slide it down, right? Just like that. A little bit more, I'll go a little bit further, right? All depends what you want yours to look like and the angle of your knife and everything else all working for us, right? Put a little bit of glue in there. We're gonna end up having a lot of fo uh, <laughs> foam, fog, and different stuff in there too. So I'll have to come over that bit of blue now. And you get those little things, the little bits of blue. Imagine how hard it would be to sneak in a little bit of blue into that little gap, right? Or into this little area it would be so hard to go back and do that as a beginner, even as a, as a pro like me, right? It's hard. That's why I like doing the, the easy way. I'm the easy man's painter. I never took a class. I watched some Bob Ross videos, 
like everybody else. And I started painting and, uh, you know, kind of teaching myself what worked, what didn't work. How does this, you know, what's going to happen if I pull the knife in this direction with this much pressure? This, that, and the other. And you fail. And you fail, and you fail, and you fail, and you fail. And then you go, you step back, and you look at your painting, and you go, okay, well, that really didn't work. Maybe next time I'll try to use less pressure or more paint or whatever. And I've worked for four years for free teaching you guys how to do this stuff so you can have fun, right? It's not about my painting. It's about your painting and you having a good time. And if you don't have fun, if it's not easy, it's not fun, right? That's why I always think. The easier it is, the more fun it's gonna be. Let's take a little bit of that white, just the teeniest little bit, kind of drag it over the edge, just so it kind of creeps over. Oof, that's nice. That's nice, just so it's not a nice, uh, a straight line. You get those jagged little bits. Very cool, I love this area right here. Very neat, like the light's creeping back. Look, you can almost, Oh yes, bring that bit down just a little. Oh, see, when that light came back and then it hit back there and then it goes off and you can't really see what's going on. Very neat, guys. Just some of the times, just the smallest little things can make your painting, make or break, right? So let's pick up the last little bit of white and scrape a little bit over here, mix it up so it's not pure white. Scrape it all up, just like that. And we got this one little bit. Where can we put this guy? Where are we? I love this too. It's like this little, little disconnection right there. So nice. Right, I love our shadows, our deepness back there. So let's go up and make this just a, not a perfect straight line. Boom, amazing, amazing. Now take our last little bit of our darker color, right? Little bit, don't need a whole lot. Cause again, this is super dark, very light pressure, very light. It's gonna pick up in different places and really add some very deep, dark shadows back into our mountain back here, right? Just like that very lightly pulling it off so you're not trying to cover all the blue, not trying to cover all the white. Lit oh, little bits, just like that, right? The more you do, the harder it's gonna be to kind of discern what everything is, right? So you just need a little bit of those bits. Back in here where it's real steep, I mean, there's a few little rocks that just didn't get covered, right? And there's one more little detail, one more little beat that your buyer's gonna look at and just wonder, ooh, how did they get that, right? I wonder how long it took them to do that. Well, don't tell them, guys. It only took us a few minutes, right? Get the right technique, the right teacher, and it only take you a few minutes to learn how to do these cool things very quickly, very easily, even with the big old knife, right? Sometimes I like using our smaller knife when we're in a smaller section. Sometimes you gotta use the big knife when you're on a bigger section, right? Okay, now. In order to make our mountain look like it's floating, right? We're gonna take our two inch brush, it's just like this. I haven't cleaned it yet. It's got some of our sky color, some of our mount, uh, clouds as we were mixing it up. Now what we're gonna do again, very light pressure, taking it from the side of the mountain and just flicking it at the side, just a little bit, coming up like that, right? We took our knife down this way, so we take our brush and go up that way, right? And all it does is soften it, makes it a little more foggy, a little out of focus, right? If you were taking a picture of a mountain, you can have some areas that are sort of out of focus, some areas that are real crisp and hard, right? So let's not go all the way to the top. And this is the number one thing I say to the beginners. You don't have to do this bit. This takes a lot of our third P, which is, what's the third P, guys? We have paint on the brush, pressure on the canvas, and third P is almost the most important, does anybody know it? Because that's what you need. Let's see. Let's see if we got any comments. Practice, that's it from Jasmine over there. It's the first person I saw over on TikTok say it. Practice, you gotta have practice, right? So it takes a lot of practice to figure out the right amount of pressure to push on this so you don't get rid of all your little deals and it stays nice, just like that, right? Let's see, so now we've got all these little bits, <laughs> little, little mustache guy up there, and all these little bits of brush slapping against the canvas, right? You don't worry about that stuff because what we're gonna do is, Work it down, right? We're gonna take the same brush, start tapping into it, just like that. Then we're gonna bring it down, bring it down. We're going at an angle though, that same angle that we were pushing our mountain, tapping it, tapping it back over here like a like a like a typewriter, like ding back over here, ding, just like that, right? All we're doing, is mixing it up, and that little bit of softness, a little bit of fog. You can't really see, you can't tell where the mountain even starts. Over here, you see how we've turned the brush? We're going this way, just with a couple bristles, 
Just the top couple bristles of the brush. Don't need the whole thing. I'm gonna go this way now. Just like that, might be able to see it easier. There we go. And you can even go up into your sky. Take a little bit of pressure, mix it up. Just a little bit of foggy little mist. Maybe it's a bit of cloud, maybe it's something. You can add a cloud if you want, literally making a couple little circles. Boom, you got a nice little floating mountain in a bit of misty cloud. And if you want to make it a little more cloudy, just take a little more white paint, right? Say we came in here, not gonna to get too close to my mountain. Came in here just like that with our cursive little bit of clouds, our cursive clouds, right? Just like that, a little bit. Come in with our one inch brush again, so light pressure. This, this white instantly wants to start blending away with the gray and the blue and all the colors behind it. A little bit of pressure and then we can decide how much more pressure is it gonna take to make it look soft enough where I like it. Oh, look at all those little details in there too. So neat. So cool, guys. But you don't wanna put too much paint on the canvas. Because as we know, we're gonna be layering it. We're gonna go layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So the thicker the layers, the harder it is to then layer on something else. So you take it, put it up there, mix it down. Mix it down very lightly. We get to decide what we want it to look like. Soft little bit of cloud, kind of surrounding our mountaintop. Very cool. Now let's wash some of these brushes off because we need to have clean tools. And we're starting to run out of space. So let's get some of these brushes washed. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What did you have for lunch or breakfast this morning? Or what are you gonna have for dinner tonight? You got plans for dinner? Somebody coming over? You got family coming? You got a, got a boyfriend coming over? Ooh. Ooh. Gonna cook him dinner? That's romantic. Have, actually, have him cook you dinner. That's how it should be. Like, come over to the house. You can get all of my pots and pans dirty, but you're cooking me dinner in my own house. That's how it should be, ladies. I would do that. Be like, all right, baby, I'll be there. And uh, I'll bring, I don't know, a paella or something. I don't even know how to spell paella. Let's go like that. That's how it should be, though. You put that on your Tinder profile. Like, all right, come over, make me dinner, and then we'll see if you're a good enough cook, whether or not you can stay. <laughs> uh, or whether I throw you right out. Let's see, it's almost like an audition. It's like Iron Chef. Iron Chef. You're like, what kind of ingredients do you have? Well, I don't know, maybe you're check the pantry. <laughs> like, it's bare. Old Mother Hubbard over here. Got nothing in the pantry. All right, let's scrape this up. We've got a clean space to work. We've got a clean spot on the palette. Get rid of all that excess paint. And then we're gonna make up some gorgeous little bit of trees. A little bit of water down in here. You see that little bit? I told you, we're just gonna try to save that little bit of brightness right down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter what happens beyond that. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. I love when you guys check in. Love knowing where everyone's watching from across the world. It's literally crazy how many people watch from all sorts of different places around the world, all different time zones. Some people are up at four in the morning their time watching me, which is just crazy. Like, go, go to sleep, guys. Get some, get some rest. Get some rest. So let's see where you guys are watching from. And let's see if we can come back over here without hitting, knocking over all the cameras. So we got Sweden, Norway, Delaware. See what I'm saying? Let's see, North Carolina. Let's see, LA grapefruit for breakfast. I, you know, I've done that. I've done the grapefruit for breakfast thing. Morocco, Iowa, my house, Florida, California, Florida, in the hospital, says Ashley Hawkins. Get better, Ashley. Denmark over here on Facebook. Let's see, Mississippi, the UK, UK, Texas, Dallas. We got lots of people watching from every which way, guys. Just fantastic. Ohio over here on Facebook, Indiana, Saudi Arabia, Utah, my home state, Maine, New Mexico, Birmingham, UK, Australia, people watching from everywhere, guys. Holy cow. Holy cow. All right. Now, let's get back to what we were doing, right? We're going to come over here. Remember, this painting is available for sale right now. You can buy it before we even finish it. And I ship worldwide for free, like Amazon, man. Just free worldwide shipping in the Paint With Josh Etsy store. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can buy this painting, it's number 801. Or you can find all sorts of paintings over there. Also, this painting is gonna come framed with this frame for the price of the listing, which is $251 American, right? It's gonna come with this gorgeous gold 
and white and marble frame with all these little accents on it and little crackling. Oh, it's so gorgeous, you guys. So pretty. So if you want this painting inside that frame, get over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And now we're going to come in with some giant old tabby trees, right? Let's say we had a bit of forest off in the distance on this side. So we're going to load up our brush. Right, just a little bit of that dark purpley color, same color that we made our mountain with, but we put in a little separation of, of light color. So when we come in here, there's a few little bits of our trees and stuff. A couple little taps here and there. Bing, bang, boom. Leaving a few little areas, right? Go back, get a little bit more paint so the brush stays sharp. As soon as you come and touch this thing, it starts to instantly spread the bristles of the brush. And you want them to stay nice and sharp so you have these sharp little tip tops of our trees. And maybe just like that, we've got all this forest off into the back, right? <laughs> Look at that cloud back there too. You've got your differences in color, all there, adds so much depth, so much detail, so much distance, the three Ds of Paint with Josh, right? Talk about the three Ps and the three Ds. There we go, bring that guy down. I'm gonna add a little bit of reflection just by pulling down underneath, on, just on those guys though. We don't have to do the whole bit. It's not gonna be reflected down into our water. There we go, soft little thing. Now, I'm going to take my two-inch brush, and we're going to flatten these guys up. And a lot of people comment, and they go, I like the uh, uh, trees before you flattened them. They look better, right, with more texture. Well, you don't want to have all your texture back there if we're going to have texture up in our foreground, right? So, let's come in. Let's add one little massive, like, big daddy monster tree way out in the back over here. Let's right? say so he was out here. We don't want to come too high up into our mountain. You get this big old daddy of the forest. We'll do, like, a downward saggy old saggy tree there we go popping in down keeping it dark and all you got to have is just a little nondescript shape of a tree fill him in at the bottom with a couple vertical swipes just like that kind of puts him behind all the rest of these trees and then swipe up but obviously not touch that guy he's gonna go shooting off and that's not what we want we don't want him to go shooting off up there so a couple more little bits bing bang boom there we go little tree way out in the distance right soft little bit of detail out there. Now we're gonna take our two inch brush and come in here and decide where we want our land to sit and very lightly pull on those guys and take it up this way, right? What I like to do is just kind of tap in between those two bits so you have this little layer of fog, right? Just tapping, using the corner of the brush, just the corner, not the whole brush, just the corner bit. Trying to use as little amount of bristles as possible. Now we're going to bring this whole bit of fog up into here, all right, bring it down, tap, 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 So you've got about three quarters fog, little bit of detail at the top of the trees, all you really need, right? And we can even reflect our little guy down here, just like that. Take a little bit of our, and poof, you got a little darker tree down there. It's a little bit dark, but there we go. You can all mix it up, mix it with that liquid white that's in there. That's there, perfect. Soft little bit of reflection, right? Just by pulling down, we decide where we want our water to sit, and then over here in the reflective side, you swipe over it, but you save your soft little bit of brightness for those clouds. Just fantastic, right? Fantastic. Now, let's take the same brush with the same kind of dark color, and let's decide, maybe we had a little bit of land living out there, and as we come to it, it's gonna get wider and wider and wider, right? A little bit wider over here, sliding it up into the trees, just like that, right? Get this far off little bit of dark land out there. Goes off into the distance, and then we'll go cover over it, do whatever we gotta do. Maybe we'll put a couple little bushes just by tapping. Watch me just extend the whole bit of land way out there. Take a bit of darkness, put it underneath. There we go. Look at this, you guys. All depends what you want yours to look like, right? You get to decide what you're gonna have your scene look like all up to you. Now, let's put a couple more little, get the little guy back here. See if we can add a couple little bits of detail way off in the distance. Little upward facing tappy tree. Oh yeah, there he is, little tree. We'll tap a few little guys in around him. They're gonna get smaller and smaller and less detailed because they're further away, much, much, much further away. I'm barely gonna swipe over these guys, just kind of making them a little taller back there, a little softer as they go off into the distance, right? our bit of land around here. You can do whatever you want. You could literally have the whole bit. You know what I mean? You could walk around this whole bit of lake if you really wanted to. Totally up to you. 
Make sure your angles are right, though. Right? If we're going to come down at this angle, we got to have a little hill off to the side, just like that. Very cool, guys. Very cool. Now, let's take a little bit of our liquid white on the edge of the knife. Just a little teeny tiny bit. We're going to come way off in the distance back here. Little white line, so small, not a whole lot of detail, not a big chunky thick bit because it's very far away. All right, and the more we get closer to us, the more bits of little white that we can show and have them become bigger and bigger, right? Get more little detail, especially as we whip it around the front, it's gonna have more little things. But see how that guy being a bit brighter up here in the front makes him seem closer than these guys way off there in the back. They're very light little lines way back there, right? Doesn't all have to be the same. Look at that, this perfect reflective little bit of, of uh, lake scene. Just so pretty. Watch this come around the side. Just kind of pushing the edge of the, the water out there on the edge of the knife, right? Mushing it until it pops out the back of the blade. That's what we're trying to do. All right, now let's come in and get this little brush hair out of there. It's easier to do it if you've got a a thousand little brush hairs trying to grab one versus your knife, right? All right, now what we're gonna do, let's put a bit of snow back here and then we're gonna blend it out. So, a little bit of white, way off in the distance out here. So we can just drop it on and the more we push it, the light, uh, the more it's gonna become sort of gray and mix with that darker color underneath. All right, so we can decide how many times we go over it decides how bright it is, how dark it is. And then as we come up in here, we leave more little textured areas, just like we were doing with our mountain, right? More little bits, more little things, more little details to focus on. But we don't want to have the whole thing looking all exactly the same. It doesn't all have to be the same amount of brightness. It doesn't all have to be the same angle or whatever, right? You get to decide what it is, what it looks like, where your shadows are, everything. You decide that, right? Very cool. Very cool. Let's take a little bit more of this guy. There we go. See, we got more details up here in the front. It's a little bit more visual. You can't see so many things so far back there. But up here in the front, oh, you get to see more of that breakage of our snow. And little different things that are happening out here in the, in the rocks, right? Or the, the, the bank, whatever we're calling it. Whatever we're calling it. Now, what we can do over here, too, let's take a little bit of this darkness. We're going to pull it down just change the shape of our, of our bank, just like that. Swipe it over to the side. Get that little reflection of our land back in there come over here with our white again a little bit thicker a little bit of line you get these cool little things you guys really neat as long as you leave little bits of light little bits of dark every which where and you have that little bit on the end of the knife that kind of raises up above the rest and you got a cool looking bit of water very lightly very lightly swipe over that guy just for me i like doing that you guys don't have to do that but i like to do it Okay, let's come in. We're gonna do a couple big trees right over here. Maybe not one right over the mountain. So let's stick it, you know, the more you go across your thick mountain, which is why I don't like bringing the mountains all the way to the edge of the canvas. It's because it's harder to do a tree like that. And I, it took a while to learn that. Because you start making your mountains, you're like, oh, they look so gorgeous. We're gonna stretch them all the way to the sides. All that thick white paint everywhere. And then you come to do a tree over all that thick white paint and it gets all muddy and nasty. And you're like, oh, maybe I should have stopped the mountain a little bit further away, right? Now, what we need to do in order to make our tree look close is have it be taller than the mountain and sit down lower. So, as long as it's bigger than, you know, eight to 10 inches, then we're gonna be good. So let's come in here and go right from the top, little line down, just very lightly, so we can follow our angle. Just like that, little tree right there. Gonna pop it down, a little higher than the mountain, right? Lower than the mountain, obviously, is gonna bring it way closer in the front. And the lower you go down, the closer it's going to bring that tree. All right, so let's come in here, little teeny tiny taps. Just smacking at the canvas, right? Tapping at it, little bits. You start to build your little tree, all these little branches. Go back, get some more paint, though. Especially as you go over this white area. All right, you push in. Every time you push in and pull away, you're leaving little fingery bits, right? They're kind of attached. They're, they're like, wait, don't leave me behind. All those little bits you need. So if you're not leaving little chunky bits after every time you pull the brush away, you don't have enough paint on your brush. So you need to go back, load it up again, right? It takes a lot of paint to do little branches and have them remain all thick and chunky and nasty. Right? I'm gonna fill up that whole side over there. Just do the one side first. 
you need to go back and make up some more paint. So a little black, a little blue, a little crimson, all right here, just getting it all thick and gross onto the thing. Come over here and start popping out our little branches. Look. Just by random pops outward, you get all these cool little things. We fill in the interior, the inside, so you wouldn't be able to see through it. There's a bit of trunk in there anyway, so we're not gonna be able to see all the way back there. Right? Make sure it's dark. As you go across that white paint, it's gonna wanna blend. And it's gonna wanna get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter because it mixes within all that white paint, right? Oh, perfect. Cool little tree right there. So you gotta have it be thick on the brush. You have a lot of paint out there. And just like that, these cool little branches. Sharp as you want them, but that's just the shadow, right? It's not our finished tree. That's not the finished product. That's just the shadow that's gonna grab up all of our little highlights and make them just gorgeous, right? Just like that. Perfect. Very cool. Doesn't, again, doesn't have to be the most perfect tree you've ever seen. I'm just going to get a few little details on the end for the buyer in case it gets purchased. In any, in any case, this one's going into a frame, but I like to wrap around and finish the edge, and that way it kind of looks like it wraps our little 3D scene, right? Very cool. Okay, let's come in here, grab our one-inch brush, one of these. Let's grab this one-inch brush, and we can decide, right? Do we want to have a bit of bushes at the base? Did you bring your tree down far enough? Do you need something else? Or can you literally just pull out at the bottom and have a bit of land come down there, right? All up to you, all up to you. I think we should add a little bit of bushes back here. While we got it on the brush, and while we got all this dark color all mixed up, let's see, what? hang on, what is going on? God dang it, there we go, I gotta see. Some of the time my watch will tell me if the painting's sold or not, right? Okay, let's get that black, that blue again, a little bit of crimson, just dabbing it up. Get real crazy thick, as much as you can get into your brush. Now we're going to come underneath our bit of tree, popping up into it, remembering where we wanted our tree to be. And then we get to decide how many little bushes are going to push back all of our bit of water. Right? We don't want to lose all of our, um, our glare, so we're going to try to keep a little bit of that whiteness. We're really going to drag your eye right in there, right to where all these little bits of bushes that aren't even connected. I love that when you have a little piece that's not even connected to the bush. That's my favorite. That is my favorite. Boom, just like that. A little bit of grossness, a little bit of nastiness, some chunkiness, all over. Hello, woo, look at that, guys. That's how you gotta catch sometimes. That's the amount of pressure that we put on the canvas, right? When you're smacking on those bits of bushes. That was a close one. What a catch, Josh, good job. I didn't even get any paint on my hands either. That means it's not the first time that that's happened. That's happened many, many, many times. You gotta get good at catching it, right? Or holding the canvas behind here so it doesn't fall out. All right, now we're gonna come in here very lightly and swipe away. I don't really wanna lose the tip of the reflection of that tree. I really like that. And come back over there, grabbing up a little bit, sliding it down at this slight little angle, and then we can decide how much land is there, how much water is there, whether or not we put a little bit of our blue color in here so when we go across it with some white snow, it'll shine as our little shadowy bits, right? All depends on what we want to do. Very cool, very cool looking. It's gonna be sweet. You can even take it like this, go as far as you want. Cut off the whole bit of land, right? There we go. That whole bit of land, and what I tell you, we're gonna save that one little bit of brightness, that unpainted canvas that we never even touched right there. Just like that, just like that. Okay, now, let's take a bit of white onto our brush, and you need a fair amount of it because it's going to dissipate quickly. All right, so we'll start over here, start swiping it down, swiping it down, swiping it down. All of a sudden, you got your nice little snowy bank. The more that we push, the more it's gonna mix in with that blue, and then we're gonna slide it back up into those bushes. You know, you go up in there, it just looks a little more natural, to me anyway, if you slide it up in there, and some of the times you can get a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of light, a little bit of shadow up underneath those bushes like that. It's just our little, like we do with our seascapes. And when we slide the bit of sand up underneath the bush, it's exactly what we're doing right here. All doing the same thing, just making different little bits. Maybe we got a little bit brighter white out here, so we're touching with less pressure. Right? Less pressure. And again, slide it back. That way we have all these little differences, these little bright areas, dark areas, here, there, and everywhere. Look at that. Oof. I had a big chunk on the brush and we use less pressure to keep it nice and white like that. So again, if you get a good chunk where it's hanging off the edge, 
just kind of leave it on there in certain places and then very lightly go back across it. It's almost like doing it with a palette knife, right? And if you don't use too much pressure, you can have all these cool little bits out into your snow. Very cool. All right, let's add one more bit of darkness and then we'll finish it off with all of our gorgeous highlights. So getting all that nasty paint up into the brush again. This time we're gonna hang on to the canvas over here as we pop in these little bits of bushes. There we go. Don't wanna to try to cover all of our bank. It's gonna to get too hard to discern what's happening. You have to have a little bit of your water coming from somewhere and leading out of the painting, right? With a little walkway down there for us. But we can go down and cast a line out in there, sit and have a chit chat, right? Just like that. A little bit of darkness. Pop out your bushes, however far you want them to be. Very cool. Looks like we can walk right around there and just go for a swim. In fact, it might be too cold. I don't know. We'd be in Russia and go for a, an ice cold dip, right? Just like that. Pulling it different directions, different ways, different angles, right? Sliding it over to the side so it doesn't look like it's way up on top of this thing. Now we're gonna try to make it very bright with a lot of white and just a little pressure. Just trying to drop literally look it's literally gooped on there and hanging off and so as we brighten and soften it so the little things are a little bit brighter than this side over here so you can take it you can do it with a palette knife but a lot of people don't like the palette knife they find it difficult to use so i like to show you little things we can do and just with the amount of pressure right looks like a palette knife but we just caked it on there with the brush you can do nothing crazy boom just like that a little bit of brightness out there a little of our bush now we really gotta wash that brush off because there's so much thick paint just caked inside. You gotta dip it into your cup, shake it off into the can, and then beat the devil out of it right into the bucket. All right. Very cool. Now, I'm gonna soften this guy by sliding it back up into the bushes. I'm telling you, it makes it look a little bit more realistic if it can slide up into there, right? Darkening that section. Get, oh, there's so much paint right here. That even the slightest little bit wants to drag a whole huge thing up into there, right? And look, even though I darkened it like that, you see how it's a little bit brighter than the rest? That's not what you want. You want it to be dark. So go back over it with that dark paint. Keep it all the same amount of darkness. Now I'm gonna take the same brush. We're gonna wash off this brush and then we're gonna go back and we can use it for our highlights on our bushes. All right, and then we're gonna get a little bit of our liquid white out and a new clean fan brush. And we're gonna highlight our tree over here. Be very cool. So you guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich, and just how ice cold are you? Do you need a Do you need a coat? Are you warming up by the heater because of how cold this painting is making you feel right now? Just a four color painting, and they tend to be almost the coldest. I think three colors is the coldest painting you can do. But four color painting, man. If you keep it on the blue side, you are in good shape. Good shape for a jacket, right? And it's getting really hot out here in Las Vegas, which makes me want to paint cold places. Once it gets too hot, I don't want to be in the heat anymore. I want to at least escape to the cold in my mind. And so we start painting a lot of winter scenes in the dead heat of summer because I just don't want to be in this heat. All right, let's see. We've got all this gorgeousness out here, guys. All of our little details and our rocks way out there. A little bit over here, so cool, right? That's almost too much texture way out here. So what we need to do is soften it just like we did with our mountain. Very soft, very soft little bit of pressure. Woof! So softly, just touching it this teeniest, tiniest little bit. Light as we can possibly do it. All right, now what brush are we gonna use to highlight these bushes, is the, or the trees is the question. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich. I'm gonna come back here and give you a few shout outs. See if we got any hardcore fans that are watching like they always do. Let's see, Chase is here. Such a legend, thank you. Appreciate that. Mm. We got people from France, Johnny Trollis. Giving me a bunch of roses, you're sweet. We got Jessica here, we got Dyes in Hawaii. Jasmine's watching, uh, we got people from Kentucky. Dale over there in Scotland's checking it out. 90 degrees in Indiana, ooh, that's just bad. <laughs> that doesn't just, you guys probably got more humidity than us too. Kentucky watching over here. Maryland, London, Texas, Oregon, Germany, Sweden, Boston, Czech Republic, South Africa, New Mexico, South Africa again, Brazil, Liverpool. My, my paintings are amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Liverpool, the Liverpudlians. Hmm. Okay, let's come back in. We need to get out 
are liquid white, right? Looks a lot like this. Now normally, this is the jar to another liquid white thing. And I like to, when I, when I get rid of an empty a, a jar, I save the lid and it becomes my little Petri dish. And so what I'm gonna do is transfer some of this paint into this little jar and that way I won't contaminate my fresh white paint by dipping into it with a brush that has color on it, right? So let's go back. We're gonna get our palette knife out. I'm gonna open up this jar, get it into my little Petri dish and then I'll show you what we're talking about. A little bit, I need a new liquid white jar. This one's almost completely empty. There we go, a little bit, bam. Yeah, I'm gonna have to throw this one away. It's like solid at the bottom. Okay, just like that. Wipe off the old knife and get back to it, right? Over here and over there, wiping that off like that. So you can see my little Petri dish now has this very runny, very white, liquidy paint inside of it, right? Now, when I say liquid white, that's what we talk about. That's the paint. You can get it from my Amazon affiliate shop, amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. You can go over there, or you can get it from bobross.com or anywhere on Amazon, really. You don't have to be my affiliate shop. I just make a few pennies. The more you guys shop through my links, I make a little bit more money. So, I appreciate every single one of you. All right, let's come in. Little brush, we gotta decide. Some fan brushes make different shapes, right? Like. The same brand of fan brush, but this size might make a different shape than the smaller size or the bigger size. So you gotta kinda depend, it depends on what, you know, what size your tree is, how big you want your highlights. So, let's come in again. I'm gonna show you guys how we made up those colors, okay? Just like we made our colors back here, we need to get rid of all this dark paint, because we're not really gonna use it. And this we're gonna save for later on, because I'll be back maybe three, four times today painting live on TikTok. So, if you don't follow us on TikTok, Maybe I'll go on Instagram today too, guys. Ooh. Would you guys want to see me go live on Instagram? We'll do as many times as we go live on TikTok today, we'll go live on Instagram too, if you guys want to see. So if you don't know, my Instagram is at paintwithjoshk, just like my TikTok. You add that K to the end, and then over on YouTube and Facebook, just paint with Josh, no K, right? Here we go. Let's mix up our color. We're going to take a bit of our blue. Over here, we're going to make our shadowy color, right? A little bit less white because we're gonna be adding our liquid white. More white, more white, more white's gonna make it too bright, right? So let's go a little bit more blue. Just like that, getting all that mixed up in there. Now I'm gonna scrape up a good amount of our liquid white, just like that, and mix it in. It's very runny, very runny bit of paint. So that's brightened up the paint and made it more goopy and wet and thin, right? Just gross. Let's get a little bit more. There we go, put that in there. Now, we're gonna get a little bit more as well for our white section. Now, this is why we didn't use the pure white back here. We doled it down with that blue a little bit so that our pure white would stand out up here in the front, right? Just like that. Bunch of titanium white and a bunch of liquid white all together to make it nice and goopy. If it's not wet enough, it's not gonna come off of our brush. Let's add some more liquid white. Just all sloppy, but you don't want it to be all liquid white. Right? You gotta have some amount of our oil paint in there to retain the shape of the brush and the shape of the bristles and everything else. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a big bunch of splotches up on the, the thing up there, and that's not cool, right? Now, we're gonna come into our white and blue section. Mix this kind of up like this. It's very runny compared to these thick piles up here, right? That's what the liquid white does. It makes it easier to come off the brush. So we're gonna tap on the left side of the trunk back there. And then, I know it's, it's sort of difficult sometimes to see, but we're gonna come over. We're not gonna to try to cover every bit of dark, right? Gotta leave some dark areas in there. That's where our little, our little critters live. I right? can't cover all that up. And it doesn't have to be the brightest thing. They're little shadows. We're gonna go across them with our highlights, right? But again, not trying to cover every bit of dark. Don't have to cover every single thing. What we got over here? Cha-ching! Holy moly, what was this? Siri, I don't need you. What's going on? Let's see. What Did we just get a sale? Did we sell this one? What's, what's up here? What's up? What's going on? Let me look, let me look, let me look. Okay. Pop, 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 pop. No, I'm, just, I'm looking in the completed orders. I was like, we have way too many orders. Let's see. That's it right there. Jacqueline. 
Jacqueline bought this painting, you guys, so it's no longer available. And Jacqueline gets the upgraded awesome frame as well that comes with it. So, a little bit of our blue over there. Just don't even have to make it bright all the way down, right? Just like that. Uh, now we're going to come back doing the opposite thing on this side with our brighter color white paint. Right? Boom. And again, if you have too much liquid white and not enough oil paint, it's going to just be like globs, splotchiness. You gotta have that oil paint, the thick paint in there to kind of counteract and then retain the shape of the brush and everything else, right? So, awesome, thank you for your order, Jacqueline. You're amazing, and I just love you so much. We're gonna come in here with our white and the liquid white. Remember, we made that little pile, so it's kind of runny. That way it'll transfer off of our brush easier. Come in, we're gonna touch the right side of the little thing now, just like that. So you get a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and then a little bit of black in between. Now we're going to come over here and just start tapping up right? little things, not trying to cover all the darkness, not trying to cover all the shadows, not trying to have it be all white, right? If we come down little bits. Now, it's going to be harder to do the more you come down. It's going to start changing the color of our brush to this darker color. So you can rotate your brush around, and then you got fresh white branches, bop, 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 leaving little spaces in between. Look at all these dark spaces. It's almost like a like a checkerboard, right? It's like a checkerboard, literally. White, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, all across. And that way you've got all these little different things. Now look, there's no area of the brush that doesn't have black paint on it, right? So, well, not black, but that very dark purpley paint. So we're gonna wash it off. Now we gotta be careful, right? We didn't load the brush enough. We didn't get it done in one fell swoop. So this is when it becomes treacherous, right? We know that automatically, right here, this is gonna be so bright. We've allowed it to work its way darker and darker and darker by allowing it to blow. Ross told us that it doesn't need to be so bright, right? So we gotta be careful with how much paint we're about to touch right here. So you can even go up and kind of go over some of your other ones just very lightly, just so you get that little mix in there. You don't wanna cover up too much. And then light little pressure, we get to decide what it looks like, where our bits of bright are, and then they're going to start to rotate around the tree, right? Not the, it's not a, just a half and half job. There we go, guys. That, that's it right there. Poof. That's the touch. That's the one right there. Now, remember, Jacqueline is going to need help naming this painting, you guys. It's already been purchased, but she's going to need help naming it, is my thought. I would need help naming it. Maybe she already has a name, and that's fine, but your name that you put forth in the comments might just change her mind. And she's gonna be watching on all three platforms. Jasmine, or Jacqueline, is it Jacqueline? Or Jasmine? Jacqueline, okay, Jacqueline, number 801, you got it. Now I hope you live in Utah, that would be cool because of the area code 801. <laughs> I'm from Utah, so 801s make me happy. And then 808s, we hope to go to Hawaii, right? Because that's the area code over there. All right, let's add a little of our blue shadowy bit. Again, not trying to cover everything. And the blue wants to go dark quickly. There we go. We decide what's in the shadows. And then we can go back over and highlight. Look at those little things, not covering all the dark. You gotta have places for the critters to live, right? Our little pocket squirrel's gonna live down in there. In my case, it would probably be my ferrets, or London's ferrets. She has the ferrets now, but probably be the ferrets. And if I could get one of the ferrets to sit on my shoulder during a painting show, boy, oh boy, would I. They'd be sitting out there like this, hanging out on my shoulder. <laughs> Me and Bandit, the little ferret man. Oh, that'd be so cool. But they're, uh, they, they like to move. When they get out of the cage, they do not like to sit still. Dang, a little bit of blue, and then we're going to come over with a little bit of white, and we'll be all set. So if I gave you guys a thousand tries to guess my ferret's names, you would never. You would never. So I want to see, guess my ferret. I'm going to give you one of their names, okay? One of them is Bandit. Right? Because he's got like a little black mask, like a raccoon. He looks like a bandit. Right? You'll never guess my other ferret's name. So, please, take a guess. I'm going to come back. I'm going to give you guys one minute. One minute to look at this painting and guess while I look at the comments. And if anybody can get it right, I'll give you a follow. I'll give you a shout out. I'll even send you a freaking canvas print if you can get it right. Let's see. Let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Nope, I got nothing yet. Rocky, no. Levi, nope. Let's see, June Snowfall. Uh, his name is Vibe. Nope, 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 
Nutsy, Rocco, Chip Crash, Mr. Bean. None of these are the correct answer. I'm giving you guys about 40 more seconds to guess. Nike, Gizmo, no, 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 no. Canvas, that would be funny. Drippo, Brush, Stewart, Peanut Butter. Ferret is Snow White, no, no, no. Tupac, no, Picasso, Clyde, Smokey, Rufio, Chili. I'm, I swear, I'm going to give you guys a canvas print if anybody guesses it. You're never going to guess it, though. Never will. Bob, nope. Let's see. Everest, Beans, Pine, nope. Bullwinkle, nope. Boogie, Jason, Susan, Bob, nope. I wish it was. Raphael, Sambo, nope, 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 nope. All right, you guys, this time is about to be up. Ten seconds to go. Blue Ice, no. Ferret, no, that's not the name. Stinky Josh, no, that's not it either. Bandicoot, like Crash Bandicoot, that would be cool. All right, time is up, everybody. Nobody got it. I'm going to give you the answer right now. All right, or maybe we should save the answer, and then we'll use that again as another question, guys. That sparks a lot of comments. I don't know. All right, maybe I'll save it. I'll save it. So remember, we've got Bandit, and then we have Blank. And if you can guess Blank's name at any moment during any show, and I actually see the word... Then I'm gonna send you a canvas print. I'll send you. I'll have you message me. I'll get your address and I'll send you a canvas print for free, just if you can guess my other little ferret's name. Now we're gonna take our white and liquid white together. We're gonna to come over here very lightly, and start touching. It wants to come off the brush so easily. All right, come on to this side. A couple little bits of bright, but not everywhere. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Come over here. Maybe this area got a little bit of light streaking across, and then it was back into the shadows. Maybe we had a little piece pop out up there. Right over the tip top, you get those little bits of brightness, a little bit of white out there, right? So gorgeous. Not too much pressure or it's going to be too much white and too much paint is not good. A little bit up on top. I have it come down. Very cool, guys. I'm going to scrape it up over here. Get any little last bit we can get. Pop up onto this guy. Out over the shadows, into the watery area. You have to put it out over the bits. You don't want to just cover up your shadows. you got to kind of extend them. Look at that. Oh, so cool. Leaving it nice and dark right down there. A couple little bits. Whoop. Just a little thing hanging out on the edge. Very cool. Gorgeous little painting with the right amount of pressure, the right amount of paint, and the right amount of practice, guys. You can do anything. You can literally do anything. With the right amount of Paint With Josh videos, you can do anything. All right. You guys, this one came out fantastic. So, Let's get a name going. I'm going to clean up the palette while you guys start putting forth all the names. We're going to get all this area cleaned up so I can come back and do a painting later on on Instagram and TikTok. We're going to go crazy. <laughs> Try to get as many sales as we can get. we got to pay bills, guys. Rent is due. i got a new car i got to pay for. Man. So, and then we're going to frame this painting right here in front of everybody. i got my screw gun. i got the screws. i got the clips. i got everything. So, start coming up with a name. I'm going to finish cleaning up these brushes. We're going to add in the little bird family, and then we're going to get going on the name. So, I'm going to sign it here. Now, these birds, I think, are more famous than even me. I think I think you guys just follow the birds. It's not, that's what it should have been. It should, I, should have, I should just change the name of the channel to Paint With The Birds, right? And then we'll have these little birds, because if you guys, you guys never let me forget them. And if I do try to end the painting without having these birds in there, man, the fans go crazy. So I think it's more the birds than, uh, than paint with Josh, which is okay. Which is okay. Do you guys know what these birds represent? Can anybody in the comments tell anyone else who doesn't know what these three birds represent and why they mean so much to me? Why they go into every painting? Can you tell me? If, how long have you been a paint with Josh fan? Right? Tell me you're a paint with Josh fan without telling me you're a paint with Josh fan. What do these three birds represent, guys? Can anybody tell me in the comments? I'll give you an old shout out I've got about 10 seconds to clean this brush, and then I'm coming back over there. All right. Let's see. Does anybody know the meaning? The meaning of the three birds. My family. That's right. The three Ps. That's a good guess. That's a good guess, but it is my family. Me, Bailey, and London. Well, me, London, and Bailey. That's how they go. Let's see. Past, present, and future. That's cool, too. I like that the three Ps, uh, you know, is a is a, uh, a guess, that's cool. Beat the devil out of that brush, I know. We got one more to do it too. Got one more to do it too, I'll show you guys how we do it. Go into the cup, shake it off into the can, and then I'll bring the beater bucket up here so you guys can see it. 
just ah, beat the devil out of that brush right into the bucket. That's the funnest part of the whole thing. And then we always got to dab it off on a paper towel. Don't forget that part. Otherwise, some of that, some of the paint and some of the color and some of the, the cleaner is still inside the brush if you don't dab it off on a paper towel and your brushes will get hard. They'll like literally seal and you won't be able to use them. So make sure you dab it off, right? Even after you beat the devil out of it, even if you've done it for 10 straight minutes and you've been still dab it off on a paper towel, please. It's gonna save your brushes. It's really gonna save them. All right, we've got the signature in with the Bird family. We've got the JK. Does anybody know what the JK stands for? <laughs> I would hope you guys would know what the JK stands for. Actually, you know what we're gonna do right here too? Just for one more little piece of detail, because we're on a white canvas. Let's see. Oh, that's so cool. Got a little message over there. All right, so we're gonna take these things, scrape in. Because we're on a white canvas, it's gonna create all of these little sticks and twigs underneath these bushes that are holding everything up, right? Into the dark areas. Don't go into your light area. Go into the deep darkness. That's where all of our little branches and little stems and twigs, where everything lives, right out there in the deep darkness underneath, holding up all those little bits of flowers, right? Lots of little stuff. You decide how many you wanna have in there. Just like that. Cool. Just another little piece of detail for the buyer to look at, right? Now we'll come in here and off of one of these guys, I'm gonna make my signature. So it might look like a tree branch. Might fool some people. There we go. Now it starts to instantly mix in with that dark paint. So I gotta go back to my liquid white. That's too much paint. Too much paint on the brush, right? Paint is number one, because if you have too much paint on any brush, it's really gonna hurt you. All right, and then pressure is number two, because too much pressure, also gonna hurt. Very cool. Just can't get that J to stand out. There we go. Nice and bright. Perfect, amazing. Okay, let's see here, guys. Now, we gotta name this old painting here. This old, brand new painting. So, let's see what we got for names. What's the buyer gonna choose? Who is the buyer anyway, right? Who is the buyer? Right, but it says, stands for my initials, but what, do my, what are my initials? Do you guys know my name? Let's see, Icicle Wonderland. Who is the buyer? That's the question, and then we'll see over here if they can announce themselves in the comments. Tell me where the painting's going to. Something that tells me you're the buyer and that you bought the painting. Let's see. High above the mist. That's really cool. The birds are a nice touch. Thank you. Appreciate that. Forest. Let's see. K. Jones. What's happening, K. Jones? That's what it stands for. That's very true. You guys are right. You know the name. This one's already sold, actually. It sold for $250, I think, $251. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Yeah, with taxes and everything, it's about $270, but it comes with a, uh, with a frame that we're about to frame. But I need the buyer to tell me the title <laughs> of what we're going to do. What are we going to do? I thought it was Jasmine, but it wasn't Jasmine. It's Jacqueline. So, let's see. Uh, Yeah, I don't know if they're in the comments or not. So, no, we don't do we don't do auction styles. I don't do that. It's it, the the cost is the cost. If you like it, you buy it. If you're the first one to get it, then you're the first one to get it. So, Bull Mountain. All right, let's see. Let me message the buyer here just to make sure because I don't I don't want to choose a name and then have them you know miss out on choosing the name. Hey, sweet, you're gonna paint with me, Loopy Lou. That's awesome. See. Let's see here. I wonder if they were even watching or if they just bought it. Just they must have been watching, right? Must have been watching. Winter Splendor. We got people over here saying it's Frostland, Frosty Fantasy, Winter Fantasy, True North or Mirror Lake. I like Mirror Lake. That's a cool one. Misty Waters, Early Morning. Let's see. Crystal Lake, Frozen Peak. Man, you guys are awesome. Good titles, guys. Good old titles. 
Okay, let's see. Blue Ridge Mountains, Lone Pine. I like that too. Winter's Delight. All right, well, Jacqueline either needs to write to us or send me a message or we can't name this painting. So what I'm going to do here is turn it around. We'll sign it on the back, and then when she, uh, when she gets back to me, hopefully she'll get back to me here in a second, and uh, she can either choose one of the names or I'll name it, and then we'll, uh, we'll call it good. We'll end the stream, we'll go over, we'll uh, go get prepped for our next little painting adventure, right? I'm going to do a lot of paintings today, guys, as many as I can get done. So, this was number 801. 801! It's my home area code for Utah. I'm going to sign this bad boy right here. Could you try again? No, Siri, I don't need, I don't even know why I wear this watch. It just ruins my show. Right, you're, you're ruining it again. Thank you, Siri. Appreciate it. Okay, this one we painted on 6-3-23. We're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com. Check out when my when I'm on live all the time. My schedule is up there. So it'll tell you where we are. Then you can find our Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all those other pages. All right, let me just peek back in the comments, see if we have any. Do we have a buyer in here? No? Nobody? All right, let's pick a name then. We're going to pick a name. I'm going to pick the best name right here. We're going to scroll up and randomly stop at a certain point right there. Ooh, Devil's Peak. I like that. Icicle Peak. Let's see where the bodies are. Somebody said that's funny. Winter's Creation, Snow-Covered Wonderland. I like True North. I really like that. Ooh, The Silence of Winter. I like that one too. All right, Andrea Becker. You're getting a follow for getting second place. Because I like True North, and that's Troy Moretti. I already follow you, Troy. So, let's see. True North is going to be the title of this one. I dig that. True South, right? Boom. All right, guys, let's spin this one around. We'll end the show, say goodbye to everybody, and then we'll do our little TikTok wrap-up. We do need to finish the top of the canvas, though. Look at this thing. So... Everybody else come into that problem where you have the top of your canvas that uh, is covered by your easel. Can't just put glue on there and watch what happens. It doesn't spread, right? And it's very dark. It won't spread across the canvas. So get a little of your liquid white on the brush as well. Go across the top. There we go. Now it'll start to blend, right? And that liquid white's going to lighten it up. And I'll show you right here. Just like so. We decide what we want it to look like. And then... Poof! Nice and blue. Matches our sky. Fantastic. Fantastic. We need to make it a little bit darker. By adding a little bit more blue paint now. All right, a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue. And I know this one's getting framed, but I like to finish them no matter what. Right? Show you guys how simple and easy it is to finish it just like that. Now, we're going to go frame this sucker right here on the show before we end. I just got to get it ready. There we go. Set it down, clean this brush, and then we'll get out the old gorgeous little frame. It's going to be fantastic. Fantastic. So everybody loves this one. We had a lot of people watching this one, guys. A lot. Every time I look back there, it was like 1,400 people watching. It was crazy. So let's come in here and let's see. Okay. Bop, bop, bop. Gorgeous, gorgeous.